In this genre of President's Play D&D, there is a content creator who has taken a very unique approach. They in fact do not use any of the presidents, but instead a cast of all-female politicians. Having two videos currently out, with the third being worked on, they've accumulated over 5,000 views. I am Crafty GG, this is Roll for Discussion, and I am joined this evening with special guest and fellow content creator, President Ashenhart. Good evening, matey. Good evening. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you so much for having this podcast. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate you even bringing us together, you know, bringing this sort of niche genre into sort of a consolidated space where we're all able to share our processes and basically, you know, like, you know, have like-minded discussions with people who essentially do the same thing that um you and i do i think that's really really uplifting and really special so th thank you for even having this podcast in the first place i really do appreciate it well thank you it's, it's really kind of you to say i mean um it, it's been fantastic so far you know being able to 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 speak to a few of the content creators i'm, ho I'm hoping my, my aim is to hopefully one day i can get every single one of them on you know and then we and, and the idea is essentially is that so that people who are, who are listening in can take everything that all these different content creators are saying on board and hopefully inspire them to then make their own, you know, versions of this. Because the the beauty about all this is that you know everyone who's watching this sort of stuff, they've all got some kind of a love for for D and D, and I'm sure so many of them have probably have got their own sort of stories that they'd love to bring forward. And they might not necessarily know exactly what it it takes to put something like this together so it's, it's a really great way to sort of bounce off ideas off of each other you know get all that that feedback and knowledge you know and just sort of like help inspire you know future content creators absolutely and i understand that we all come from different backgrounds um i mean i'll, I'll explain my uh, lack of experience with Dungeons and Dragons proper um, as the interview goes on so i think that may make me kind of a unique creator in that yeah yeah i mean it's, oh, yeah. It, it's fantastic obviously because you obviously with each content creator they, like you said you know they come from different backgrounds some people have more experience than others making it i think uh just touch upon a different one like coco mimi i think when she started um she had it said you know she'd had almost like no experience with like D and D, but she was you know inspired by malifrex you know on doing that so it's it's just so cool to see like even you don't even need to know that much about D and D to get into it. You know, you just got to have that sort of passion to to the, want to tell a story, as almost. Absolutely. Um, the whole thing that led me to liking D and D was essentially the storytelling aspect of it. Um, I could not tell you any rule or how any of the mechanics work. All I know is that it's a collaborative storytelling effort. Um. A lot like improv, actually, which I do have a little bit more of a background in, um, performing arts, filmography, film production, etc. Oh, that's um, so I come at it sort of from that angle. Yeah, well, that's really yeah. good. Because I'm going to say now, before I even get to the questions, because obviously back when first um, got in contact, uh, I'd already seen your, your channel. Uh, I'd done quite an extensive bit of research into checking out, looking for as many people who did this as possible. And obviously there's a lot of people that sort of fell short after like one episode maybe some maybe did a few more and then they just kind of sort of fizzled out or gave up or or found other things to do or whatever the reason was and um and then when we when we had got in contact each other about going on podcast, i rewatched the episodes and i couldn't tell that i couldn't tell if you had no knowledge of D D because there was a lot of things in there it was just like yeah okay that it, to me, it's, it's like you had that experience. It, it, not necessarily saying like you had years of it, but that I, it, I couldn't tell that you were someone who maybe just had more of like, like you said, more of like an improv thing rather than like lack of D and D experience. That does sort of bring my question. What, so, what is your D and D experience uh, as a whole? Absolutely none. I have never played a single game of real life Dungeons and Dragons. Um, the only time I've really actually like played anything close to it was. Gosh, um, I'm harkening back to like when I was in middle school, and uh, one of my friends on a bus on a bus drive uh, to a field trip like thing. Hmm. Um, he 
basically said, hey, you want to play a Star Wars D&D? And then so I said yes. And then he said, okay, so the way we roll, because we didn't have dice, is that I would guess a number one through ten that he was thinking of. And the closer that I got to his number, the better I would do in whatever action I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so we played that for about an hour, two hours or so. And it was, you know, just the imagination and the fun of it and the fact that, oh, this is just a story that's being made up on the fly and that we have agency over, you know, I mean, not complete agency because obviously you can't be a god or like be just, you know, overpowered because of the dice, the almighty dice. <laughs> um <laughs> And um, so, yeah, um, I have absolutely no experience playing Dungeons & Dragons at all. I have always wanted to play a real game. Um, I I've never really seen Critical Role either. I've seen a couple clips, never really got into it. Um, Matthew Mercer is, again, fantastic voice actor. Um, oh, yeah. But it's sort of like watching people play Dungeons & Dragons is, I feel like, sort of the equivalent of watching people play a video game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not as fun if you're just watching them, unless they're like super, you know, engaging and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I I can sympathize. I mean, up until a, a few years ago, I I had I had no experience with with D and D. I like I only just knew they had stood for Dungeons and Dragons. That that was the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> you know, um, I had I did have some in real life friends who. who uh, played it I tried sitting down with them just to sort of watch a game and I could feel myself falling asleep within 30 minutes now I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a discredit to them or if it's just I had a very terrible uh, attention span at that time but over over the the last few years uh, I really got engaged with it with uh, it was a, a YouTube buddy of mine who we did collaborations on like, other other like video games and stuff and he was sort of taking a step back from that and he said to me oh do you want to do you want to play dungeon the dragons with me and i was like uh mm, maybe i don't i'm not really sure and he's like yeah go on i'll give it a go and i was like okay i'll give it a try and he had such a way of storytelling and he kept you so engaged in like what was going on and i just got fully immersed into it and i just found i just suddenly this like moment sort of like popped in my head. I was like, "Oh my god, why, why have I wasted so many years not playing this game?" <laughs> I feel the same. I feel the same way. Except I'm still wasting life, my my years because I still haven't played. <laughs> <laughs> well, I let I let you know now. I am putting a project together in the new year where I'm going to be inviting viewers uh, into uh, one shots. So just like a self contained. A session that could be done over the span of maybe like four hours where people regardless of your experience can come in would help you create a character and you wouldn't need to worry about like your backstory or anything but it sort of like everything would sort of be explained and you could play out a session and just get that sort of taste of what it's like so if you're interested there's no pressure obviously but if you if you are interested it's something that i'm going to be looking at after after i've done a few more videos and stuff uh into the new year i'll be posting it on my channel so you're more than welcome you can you can have one of the first seats if you if you want and yeah you can uh, have a, a try your hand at it i would be honored thank you for inviting me um yeah that sounds delightful i uh, yeah i'd love to yeah fantastic uh, so right let's get into some of these uh, questions i've got so All obviously right. so you say you had obviously the, the 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 almost no experience whatsoever with it um so where have you gotten this knowledge from then for when you've like been creating these videos a lot of it um came from clone studios and baldur's gate 3 um first uh so um Back when the first two episodes came out, Baldur's Gate 3 hadn't come out yet, and I hadn't played the beta. So the only real reference to Dungeons & Dragons I had were the AI presidential D&Ds, and that's kind of where I actually kind of learned the concept from. So um, basically, rolling for advantage is you roll two dice, and the highest is the one that counts. Mm -hmm. um, and then just rolling the dice to do an action that you want to do, and then depending on the roll, it either does or doesn't or you may get close um 
so that's sort of where like the extent of my knowledge about the rules come in okay. obviously um if if you watch the first two episodes you'll notice that i use mana instead of spell slots which <laughs> yeah. is not something that dungeons and dragons uses um and uh i'll be honest the only stats that i really have kept track of for all my characters has been the health okay because i feel like that's the most important but um i even when I'm writing, I can't keep track of how much mana these characters have. <laughs> um, so I've always used them. Um, you've used a half of your remaining mana, or you've used a quarter of your remaining mana, <laughs> just to be vague enough where I don't have to think about how much mana they're using for their spell. I mean, that's absolutely fine. Like, so, I mean, one thing that's great about D&D is you can completely homebrew it. You know, you you can take the, the 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 main rules and you can tweak them as much as you want. Bring in mana in. You know, obviously it's it's not official D and D, but there's, but because of the beauty of of D and D, the fact that you can effectively make up your own rules. If you bring in something like mana, you might have some people who are like, well, that does, that's not part of it. But if you were to put something like in your description, for instance, and say, by the way, this there's homebrew elements in there, a lot of people would be like, oh, okay, fair enough. You know, it's what it is. It's not. It's not because, uh, as I say, yeah, I did when I first heard the word mana. I sort of sat there for a moment. I was like, I've been playing D anD D for two years now. When I don't remember ever hearing it, <laughs> and I was thinking, like, is I, it I is this like that? I'm just missing out here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just thinking at the time that I just I was wondering. I was questioning my my experiences. Like, have I did I just miss this completely? <laughs> nope. Um, uh, pretty much all my fantasy elements and inspirations um, prior to Baldur's Gate 3 had come from World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, um, basically all the stereotypical medieval fantasy RPGs. Mm. Um, and then the story elements came from a lot of anime and some uh, typical Dungeons & Dragons setups. Um, for example, I used the character Askeladd in, as the villain for the first episode. Um who is from an anime I really love called Vinland Saga. Okay. Um, so I, I like to use fictional characters kind of as the villains. Yeah. So that way the real life characters have something to fight against. Yeah. That's um, a nice idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I sort of a philosophy that I've been trying to go by in this one is that I don't really want to make the villains real life people because, you know, that can sort of lead to sort of a, divide i guess mm. if that makes sense so instead what i wanted to do was try to have you know the people who in real life they very clearly hate each other like i, I there's no doubt in my mind that kamala harris wants to call moji taylor green the c-word <laughs> like in real life they, i i they they want to do that so badly but they know they can't i mean uh, I, I don't know if you heard about when moji taylor green called uh, lauren Bobert a uh, little b-word on the house floor in public just <laughs> and it was recorded i don't know if you heard that story that that actually happened oh, right. yeah. well i can i i do i do sometimes wonder like because no one's channels have been taken down yet with this whole you know ai using ai voices of, of real people and i, I, I think I, it's I, yeah go on i think it's um i'm sorry i don't know you go you go first okay yeah yeah um to me the use of the AI voices, like, as long as you know that they're parody, and as long as it's super obvious that this isn't the real-life person's voice, hmm. I see it, honestly, as no different than it, doing an impersonation on SNL. You know, you have um, hmm. Alec Baldwin being Donald Trump, and then he's doing his best Trump voice, but you can obviously tell it's not him. Yeah. I sort of kind of feel the same way about AI voices, so long as they are distinguishable from the real person. Um, it, It's... To me, it's not really the AI voice itself. It's the whether you can tell it apart from the real person, and whether it can be labeled as defamatory or not. You know, um, as far as like using the actual person's voice goes and having to say ridiculous stuff, I I I think that might actually fall into parody law. I I'm, I really don't know. It's it's I think it's still quite a bit of a gray area at the moment. Uh, I know there was something quite recent. I think Biden recently said something about if anyone's uploading. I've, I've probably paraphrasing or getting it slightly i'm not getting it per bait in here so but it, i think it was something along the lines of if you're uploading something there has to be some disclaimer that you know this is ai generated 
in whatever sort of capacity, whether it's voices, images, and stuff. I don't think he's obviously. I don't think he was referring to things like what we're doing. I think it's more like when someone uploads something and they're trying to convince you this actually was Biden saying this. Um, yeah, you know, that and sort of thing. the technology that yeah, and the technology that's um, able to do this stuff is really quite stunning. Um, you know, I, you know, I mean, with the uh, with the deep fakes. Uh, combined with a legit good voice clone, um, you know, in the right circumstance, for example, I'm um, doing the Ukraine war, um, Vladimir Putin, the fascist guy, mm-hmm. um, he actually did a deep fake of of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, basically saying we surrender, mm. um, essentially, and that was the deep fake that was proven to be a deep fake, but in the context of them going into Kiev, um, and then immediately. And then soldiers immediately seeing their leader say, "Yeah, you got to stand down." That, in the right circumstance, the use of this technology can be very, very dangerous. Um, oh yeah. But, but that, that's the whole thing about technology is that it, it is neither good nor evil. It, it is technology. Yeah, it's it's those who wield it at the end of the day. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Those that wield it and how they wield it too. Yeah, exactly. But um, so my, my my theory as to why the uh, these these particular videos don't get taken down is because the presidents and the female politicians have seen it and gone, yes, that's exactly what I want to say. So I'm quite happy for this to stay up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't legally say Harris, this. <laughs> I would be honored if Kamala Harris actually saw. I, I I have no idea if these people have actually seen any of the stuff any of us have written about maybe biden saw clone studios his first episode because that has almost a million hits oh yeah that um, one i think that one got i got a lot of video other youtubers doing like reaction videos uh to it and stuff so yeah i definitely got yeah, some circulation um, that was the one that most inspired me like the most of all just you know i could not stop laughing when you know you know uh donald trump's like why are you dressed as a cleric aren't you just as an old P word, <laughs> uh, mother effort of a cleric. This seems mildly inappropriate. Come on, guys, let's chill out. <laughs> well, it does kind of uh, bring me so into. Uh, he does have some quotable ones, definitely. Uh, this uh, does sort of um, bring me into my next question: Is what was it that got you started into it? Wanted to make this type of content and channel? Uh, well, at least. Because uh, I know, I know, not necessarily. This wasn't the start of your channel because you were doing some other AI uh, works. But was it was it specifically clone then that got you like, that sort of go made you go? You know what? I want to start doing Dungeons and Dragons like with politicians. Yeah, so um, clone really was the catalyst behind why I wanted to start doing uh, Dungeons and Dragons politicians. Hmm. Um, and then when I was searching for more channels i ran into yours i ran into ai guys i ran into malathrex's um coco mimi wasn't around at that time um but those sort of are the main five that i think about um i also saw a bit of relic is um so i gravitate way more towards the um videos that have the full image of the character talk and then the next full image of the character talk full image character talk you know it sort of plays out more like a movie rather than a podcast so Sort of my my preference, or I guess my bias, tends to go towards the um, the AI guy and Clone Studio style of things rather than the the Malathrex, um, or the Kokomimi style, which I think are very distinct. Um, you know, good for like you know if you just want to listen to something, then you can just put it on. But if you want to like, you know, really watch a thing, then there are certain channels within the niche genre, sort of like a niche within a niche. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, I it's one of the things that I've I've touched on it before. I like how everybody has some kind of a unique take. There might there obviously there's going to be similarities, but um, I I really like the fact that you can go from one to the other, and each one can sort of suit someone's like personal preferences when it comes to the the kind of format you want to put this out with. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and um, when I yeah, and the thing that I that most made me want to do woman politicians specifically was that there was just no other channel doing them. Mm. So n- nobody. I was looking through like, like women politicians play Dungeons and Dragons. Nobody uploaded something even close to that. Yeah. So that was sort of the spark in my head where it's like, oh snap, maybe I could be the first one to actually do something like this because nobody else has done it. Um. Yeah. So, you know, it, it also sparks from that sort of challenge I gave myself. 
to not use Trump Obama Biden, which you know everybody was using Trump Obama Biden Ben Shapiro, and I'm like <laughs> everybody was using those, and I was like, really okay, like three channels is fine, ten channels, like what on <laughs> earth? Like why is Ben Shapiro the only dungeon master? Like you know, uh, AI guy uses Joe Rogan and a bunch of celebrities to his credit, but like you know. <laughs> I, I think so it's like because just, of everybody used it. I'm sorry. I know. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was, I was just going to say that I, I think the reason why so many, including myself, uh, have used those four in particular is because of how iconic uh, they are. I mean, obviously, three of them being presidents or past presidents, um, and Ben Shapiro has such an iconic voice that you know, even if you, even if someone who's not really watched anything with him in. Chances are you've heard his voice somewhere at some point. There's been a clip of him that come up, depending on whatever side that you lean on on the fence. Like someone's used a clip of him saying something in some in some context, and so oh yeah, most the, Americans... uh, the own the libs stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, so... him going onto college campuses. Yes, uh, he's uh, he's been around for almost a decade now. Like he he's. I I can't believe what is how old is he? Is he like forty now? I don't. I think he's only like mid to late thirties. I don't think he's that. I don't think he's that yeah. old. Do you mind if I look it up real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go for it. I was like, well, why are you doing that? Um. So yeah, I I think it's 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 just because of how iconic, you know, they are, and it's just it's so easy to sort of do exaggerated like versions of i think ai guy's use of joe rogan is very clever because of him obviously being such a phenomenal podcaster uh, again he's just an instantly recognizable character oh yeah like everybody's heard his voice you know love him or hate him you've probably heard him at the very least oh yeah 100 percent um which is to say yeah. then there's a lot of credit to give to you on this one because you've you've obviously gone for people that like i think outside of the us you, it there's not a lot of people could that could turn around and look at an image of one of these people and go i know instantly who that is you know mm. they they don't get me wrong they've obviously got they have obviously a level of popularity like there are going to be plenty of americans that can look at this and go yeah i know exactly who this is i mean me personally being outside the uk i recognized only uh one uh, which was um, Kamala Harris because I've I've seen I've seen clips of her before. Um, it's Marjorie... not like she's the vice president or anything. <laughs> but um, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's exactly that's my point. Obviously, so I recognised her. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Warren, I believe I've heard her name. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think I've only ever heard her name. And Lauren Boeber, I had never heard of. So there, for me, the, I think this is only just for me. But for, like, for me, I looked at it and I'm like. Mm, and again, uh, Mar uh, Mar Marianne Williamson, like I had no idea, yeah. I had no idea who that was either. So it was quite, it was. I found it quite refreshing to sort of see a channel that are using people that aren't like the straight go to go go to people to use. You know. Yeah, um, that was sort of one of my key objectives was just to provide something different, um, something you know unique you know character wise to it that would make people go oh snap this is a not president's D, D. it's still politicians um you know and the gosh you know they're, they're they're definitely not nearly as recognizable as the president's um which kind of helps like sort of with my creative process in a sense because when i listen to them talk i could sort of like you know base the dialogue and base my writing of their, you know, lines mm. um, off of their speeches rather than off of some other personality that Clone Studios invented for them. Yeah. So, you know, having sort of more of that bare bones um, uh, source material, so to speak, maybe not bare bones isn't the right word, but um, just like the lack of other person doing AI content of them, um, really challenged me to listen to their speeches and know what they're all about them. I mean, I came in with a bias, you know, uh, Marion Williamson's the only person who I'd actually met in person. Oh, really? Um, I, yeah, I just took a selfie with her. I did not tell her about my channel. So um, <laughs> to this day, she still, to this day, she still doesn't know that um, President Ashen Hart posted with a selfie with her. 
um, but maybe she will. Who knows? Who knows? Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, she just personal bias. I I think that she would make a phenomenal president. But you know, obviously, she's still like you know twelve percent in the polls. You know, Biden's going to be the nominee. So hmm. I just got to accept that at the moment. But um, you know, the the reason why I chose her as the DM was because she is a phenomenal orator. Like you know, you listen to her talk. She just commands the room. Like she is such an excellent speaker. I was gonna say um, the way you've got her DMing, she's she's definitely got a very like calm approach, um, which I think definitely balances out a couple of the other personalities in this one. Oh, oh yeah. Um, I mean, I sort of wanted to split it, sort of the personality groups into kind of threes. You know, I, the saying goes, "Comedy comes in threes. So I have the crazy Democrats who think, you know, their hearts are in the right place, but they think way too highly of themselves. You have the Republicans who are just complete lunatics, but unashamedly so. And then you have the center, you know, calm person in the middle who's just kind of trying to make sure these people work together for the greater good. Um, in the story, at least. Nice. Um, okay. And I mean, you know, the personality for Lauren Bober... I, I'm sorry, were you about to ask another question related no, no, to no. the characters? No, 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 please go ahead. You okay. said about Lauren Bobo. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I don't I don't know if your audience is familiar with the Beetlejuice fiasco with, with her and her date at that time. Um, but yeah, she was caught basically giving, like, rated RPDA to her date on camera in the middle of a Beetlejuice show. <laughs> um, you know, at, in addition to all the rumors of her being a paid escort to Ted Cruz and all that, just like, so her personality was really easy to write because of all of the all of that stuff going on with her mm. um and she was probably easily my favorite character to write too um just i'm sorry i know i was just gonna say is she uh she's definitely probably got the the biggest personality <laughs> out of all of them oh, yeah. <laughs> like i there's there were a couple of moments i was really listening uh to it and just sort of half the things she was coming out with i'm just like i need to find out what this real person is actually like 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 is, <laughs> is there even a shred of like like anything that's like this is this is what she is like because <laughs> like, <laughs> you know obviously the idea is like so the, the main cause is everyone's supposed to be sort of like exaggerated versions of them and oh yeah and uh so it was just it was just fascinating i was just like i could I, I, I just again without knowing who, uh, who she is like this is all i've got to go by <laughs> like, <laughs> i mean i i just try to go for like what if, what if these characters um had the intelligence of their age groups but the maturity of middle schoolers who are playing call of duty <laughs> you know just completely unhinged swearing at each other insulting um but at the end of the day, they're still just trying to play a game together, and you know, they're they're not gonna you know immediately get up and leave, um, partially because they can't because I made them, yeah, um, but also because it, it's, I I just think it's very funny and very nice to see very immature versions of the politicians play a game that we're all very familiar with that they would never play in real life or to our knowledge they've never played in real life yeah um and then just seeing them you know in a sense kind of work together through a plot and through a story um kind of like you know i don't know if you've seen the avengers but you know the heroes in that story don't get along at all at first you know yeah. they're fighting each other they have different objectives but eventually some common cause causes them to um realize they have to work together in order to you know come out on top even if they don't necessarily like each other yeah so that was also kind of a big through line with how i wanted to write these characters and how i wanted to write the story was that they start out hating each other and then they end still hating each other but they are at least able to work together to a common goal if they all benefit from it yeah fantastic no i really like that and you it, even with only uh, two episodes at the moment, I can already see like the sort of the groundwork of that. It's like it's starting to to come together. So I will be very excited for when the the third episode uh, uh, comes into play. Yeah. Um, I I'm conv I'm 
because the third episode is probably going to be about like an hour 40 minutes now like it is a long one um tons of fight scenes tons of action you know uh the night creatures have come and everybody's you know kind of separated out because lauren and sarah are by themselves um you know elizabeth's with carmilla so you know they're kind of not in good situations at the moment hmm. with um, with the the length of the video so over over the last like several months you know i i've seen everyone's like videos come out and obviously everyone has different lengths of how much they they put into it or how much they can put in um and i've been looking at like comments and there's a definitely a wide variety there's a lot of people who quite enjoy the long format and then there's a lot of people who mm -hmm. quite enjoy a shorter shortened one and i think with the shortened one it's maybe partly due to uh sort of then the frequency of how often those videos then come out so if you're you know you're putting together like an hour's video you're obviously going to be having big gaps in between would you yeah um, would, would you consider sh uh taking that hour and 40 and maybe cutting it down a little bit spacing out like because if we're getting, we're getting a little bit of a long long one here but obviously there's been quite it's been quite a while since your second episode to obviously when your third one's coming out then yeah it's been like four months or so it's been a long time yeah and if it if you obviously i don't know what your your scheduling and stuff is like but if there's a possibility that you could be going another couple of months at least before then episode four comes out would it be worth considering trying to chop the video up a little bit and then spacing out the scheduling so that you've got a, a bit more consistency with it because then it might it might help bring more viewership. Because one thing I've noticed with uh, with, uh, with videos, the more consistent, obviously the upload, the more the viewers come in, uh, tend to come in. You know what I mean? Like don't get me wrong, like you got oh, yeah. you got some good views and stuff, obviously coming in for it. And you look, take my advice with a pinch of salt. I ain't exactly the most popular one <laughs> when it comes You're more to making these videos. Me, don't worry. <laughs> but um. It's just I'm just sort of thinking like the long term, like if it's gonna take so many more months to then make the next one, is it worth shortening them down? Or not even shortening them down, but like cutting the the videos. So if you've got like an hour and forty minutes, maybe have one that's like fifty minutes and then another one that's fifty minutes, but then space it out. So upload your first one. I don't know when it, if you've already got that first fifty minutes done, you can find a halfway point. Send put. So um, I actually. I actually have been considering that. Um, I have been considering releasing the third episode just as episode three and four, mm -hmm. um, giving maybe a week or so in between the releases because, I I mean I do have a um, I have been building in little mid breaks, midpoints, and cliffhanger like lines because, you know. For like it is a long one and I. You know, I, I did put out a poll saying, like, or asking my audience, oh, would you rather a full hour and a half long one or a two 45 minutes ones? And the majority of the responses were, I want a full one hour, 30 minute video. And then I'm like, uh, do I go against what everybody wants or do I follow what everybody wants? Hmm. So that's kind of the conundrum that yeah. I have right now. Um, yeah. I mean, also, um, I, I was able to gosh um uh leaving some personal stuff aside i had been sort of out of a job for quite a quite a while during the production of the first and second episodes and so you know now that i have a full-time job um you know which is good for me objectively so but it also definitely takes a lot of the energy out of me like editing the third one to the frequency that i was editing the first two Oh yeah. Um. So that has definitely played a big part in a delay. You know, uh, I blame capitalism for the reason I can't <laughs> release my videos as frequently as I want to. Um, you know, and even then, some days that I just will not feel the motivation to work on it at all. Just you know, I'll just wanna light up, smoke some weed. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, I should have asked this. Um, <laughs> like so. Am I allowed to talk about this stuff on your program? Just in depth, or um... we here at Craft GG do not recommend that you go and smoke some weed. However, we cannot say the same for our guests. They can do what the hell they want. Continue. 
I am a state. I am in a state where it's legal, so that's that is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, the um, basically just. I I I have found that I have to just push myself into working on something, even though all I want to do is just lay down and watch One Piece and play Lies of P, mm. while like blasting out of my mind. You know, just that that's the thing that I want to do, but the thing that I should do is actually edit and you know actually work on the thing that means a lot to me because that at the end of the day is going to be what makes me feel better mm. not only as a creator but also like just as a person you know i feel more produ i feel good when i feel when i am productive yeah you know when i actually work on something that i care about rather than just spending eight hours a day at my company <laughs> doing the most pointless menial like robot work possible it's uh god yeah, I, um, I I get it because I mean at the end of the day the these sort of uh, these sort of like channels and uh, these like videos and stuff should always come from a place of passion and I want to to be able to put something entertaining together for people. It should never be about you know trying to get the views and get the subs uh, uh, and all the rest of that. It's it should always be about the passion for it. And if you're you know if you if you're feeling drained at the end of a hard day's work and you know you've got other things that you got to get on with and stuff like that like you should never force yourself into a situation where it could potentially end up becoming feel like you're doing like you're just working you know because if you're not enjoying it it's going to show at some point in the work whether it could be like a lack of passion or like a like maybe you're trying to hasten it a little bit too much or something so you should always always take your time on these sort of things because it, it will be it'll be more worth it you know like I, I get it with it comes to you know having that lack of like lack of time you know I'm I'm doing 40 to 50 hours a week uh, with work then I've got I've got physical training to do when I'm at home I got DIY projects around the house I get to spend time with my family I got to take the dog out for a walk this that and all the other and then it's then I'm doing like other bits and pieces I've got I have like four or five videos at the moment on the on the editing on the editing floor as it were uh trying to arrange to do i have, I have free campaigns of D, D that i'm currently in so you, you know you're trying to work all around that sort of thing and then find the time to actually you know make to uh, to put all this sort of stuff together and, and if you're not in the right frame of mind and you're not feeling that passion for it then you gotta you have to take a step back and give yourself a bit of breathing room yeah, I mean, I absolutely think that is a great way to sum it up. Um, I would say that just, you know, it, the the reason why I know I'm passionate about this project, and not that I'm choosing to be passionate, but that just I am passionate about it, is that I am constantly thinking of, okay, what is the next episode going to be like? I, like, I have outlined out at least, like, the next 10 episodes up until, like, the end of the campaign. So, like, I already know how the campaign's going to end. It's just the midpoints and where like how I want the characters to get there is the real challenge. Mm. And so right now I'm sort of, you know, le it's like eating an elephant, you know, just got to eat it one, one bite at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it's, it is a big, definitely a big process, but, um, yeah, just being able to work on it at all, even if it is just one or two hours a day. And then even if I end up scrapping what I worked on, you know, at least that is still part of the process. Yes. Um, well, speaking yeah. of uh, part of the process, uh, could you give us a, a like a rundown, like from concept to upload, on how uh, you work to make a video? Absolutely. So for the first episode, it really started out with the first three minutes. Um, that was short. I made the first three minutes back, sort of as the test back in early April, and then just could not stop laughing at what I had put together. Just, I had showed my girlfriend, she couldn't stop laughing either. Um, and just, eventually I just wanted to, like I, I had half considered just releasing the first three minutes as their own session zero video, which um, in hindsight probably would have been better for my channel, but sort of, I'm here now and I have the first 50 minute video out, so I might as well just continue on with that trend. Mm -hmm. um, but I sort of write things out scene by scene so i don't really 
sometimes I'll lay down away, but not necessarily. So, you know, I have the town scene written out, then I record that, or not record, but transcribe um, in 11 labs, um, see how it sounds, and then sort of take a break. And then for the first episode, I just ended up writing out the jail scene and the final battle just in order, and trying to get all that stuff out of the way as fast as I could. Um, and then, now that the easy part's out of the way, then I have to go on to the hard part, which is um, sequencing, timing, making sure that the that one character isn't talking too, um, that there's enough time in between the characters talking, but not too much time. So it can literally just be like a one frame difference that I'm fighting with myself over. Um, sort of the comedic timing of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the sound effects. The sound effects are probably the hardest, most uh, sound effects and sound balancing are oh, probably yeah. the two most time-consuming parts because, um, you know, I don't want Marion Williamson to sound twice as loud as Marjorie Taylor Greene through every, through everything. Which, um, I mean, uh, you know, this brings me to uh, Clone Studios, where you know I love his channel so much, but you know, Mal uh, Ben Shapiro sounds like twice as loud as anybody else else in those videos um so i mean like if i could offer one bit of like to someone who has like over a thousand times the amount of subscribers as i have um yeah just m maybe make ben Shapiro a little bit quieter because it's i don't i don't know but um no, yeah I, just i get what you're saying that i mean i have the same i have the same issue my, my wife points it out to me so many times she's like why is ben shapiro always sound like he's shouting and then Trump sounds like he's whispering. I was like, I try to balance it as best as I can, okay? But I'm only human. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, the decibels just don't want to do it. And so I'm looking up like, oh, because I actually come from a film production background. I graduated college with a film production degree. So, awesome. you know, I've taken all these classes and, you know, I've taken a animation class. I've taken several editing classes. I've taken a sound design class. You know, um, the final project of that class was to make a radio play, which is just do or not a radio play, just a a movie like a short film using mm -hmm. only sound effects. All right. Um, and nothing else. I was gonna say, and so I, using. I was, uh, sorry, I, I do apologize. I keep interrupting. While well, using. No, you're fine. You're fine. I, I just wanted to say that I'm. I uh, I really I didn't notice it the first time that I I had listened through, but when I had listened through for the second time after we have been discussing about you coming on. It, I then clocked on to your use of the sound effects, and I thought it was a really nice touch, because it does add that sort of level of immersion, you know. Thank you. Yeah, really. Yeah, good. I mean, really I, good I, on that. I try to approach the editing of this as though I were editing a radio play, just you know, editing a sound project rather than editing a podcast. Mm. Um, you know, so I have the, you know, at the very least, I got to have my ambient tracks and my music tracks and then the sound steps of them walking. And then when they attack, you know, I always try to have a sound effect for an attack and then a sound effect for them swinging, sound effect for the blade going into the guts. Yeah. You know, so that's already like three different effects right there for like less than a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it can, get, it can get quite hectic, Um, but I feel like it is very worth it. Um. Because when I, the, the thing I notice most when I see everybody else's uh, presidential D&D &D campaigns is sort of the lack of sound effects, hmm. um, especially with, um, you know, with AI Guy in his recent battle, like the huge 40 minute battle scene with all the goblins, um, you know, like half the time I see, I hear the effects and then half the time I don't. And then so when I don't hear them, I'm like, okay, what happened? What just happened? Because I'm a very like, I don't process information when people just tell me mm -hmm. the thing that's happening so I, I need some sort of external stimulus to really understand oh this person's getting bitten you know and it hurts rather than oh i take a bite attack and i deal like 10 damage and then the the, the long lengthy very well written description i might add you know but i think you know no amount of well written descriptions can sort of substitute for really good quality sound design you know i think you know it, it is a audio based medium so 
it's kind of huh? I feel like the sound design really can like elevate everybody's projects to the next to the nth degree, which I think I think Clone Studios has done a pretty decent job at doing sound effects. Um especially in his later videos. Um mm -hmm. I think he's done more with ambience, more with um the attack sounds that in his latest video he had the skeleton. Um and then so I, I did like that fight scene. I mean, I, I probably, if I were editing it, I probably add way more sound effects, but you know, the, I, it is also very time consuming to do that. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I can, I can say, honestly, I'm impressed with, um, I mean, AI guy, the way he has the, the vision for me, it's, it's a lot about the, the, the visuals. Uh, I do definitely enjoy it. The sound effects are a great added touch. I love the I love having the music in the background, but the uh, it's the visuals. The, the thing one of the things that draws me the most to AI guys ch uh, videos is when he does have the battles, and just his use of the battle mats, the the the, the visual effects he uses there, the uh, the stats like on the side. Uh, I I would definitely I feel like it's going to be one of those things now because it's been pointed out about the how there's there's some sound effects but they're not everything that i feel like that's now gonna pop up into my head every time i watch one of these videos just be like damn it president ashenheart why did you point that out to me now i know it's every uh, time he doesn't swing a sword sound effect <laughs> just delete this part of the recording don't worry <laughs> my my one of my teachers back one of my professors back in college literally said pretty much the exact same thing um and with lighting too you know once you learn how people are lit and once you learn where real life lights come from mm. you can never watch a movie the same way again <laughs> um because everybody's got the light shining right onto their face whereas in real life you know in most real life circumstances light shines from above mm -hmm. and so you know basically pretty much everybody's got like sort of the under shadow and all that mm. But, you know, in movies, you know, all of a sudden the characters like just this nice bright spot on the screen, which is, you know, better for the cinematography, but it's not like one to one with real life. Yeah. And I feel the same kind of with sound with sound design, too, is that you really don't want it to be one to one with real life because that's no fun. Um, mm. what, for one of my uh, earlier jobs that I had back in 2020, I was working at, um, with a public access, access studio and... One of those summer programs, they asked me to sort of teach a two week long sound design course to children. Mm -hmm. And so I put together this whole curriculum um, using sounds to convey mood, using sound effects to um, convey a, a sense of place. Um, and then their final project was basically to do a three minute long uh, audio movie. So basically just them having the ambience and then had them having the split steps, um, basically just making a narrative using whatever they could, whatever effects they could find online, mm. which, you know, if, if you know where to look, the light sound effects are pretty cheap. And so you can make something that sounds really good for like not a lot of money. Yeah. I've, I have, I have seen uh, several videos in the past of just like how like, like yeah like proper professionals will get sound effects like for movies and it's always been quite fascinating it's like it's, I never realized just how off how uh, how often vegetables would get used just for i know right <laughs> you know with the 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 classic one is the dragon from return of the king um and it's just a dog chewing up a toy you know when the dragon has the king in his mouth and he's wiggling him around and then the sound effect is just a dog with a chew toy that's insane <laughs> But um, uh, kind of this sort of helps blend into uh, the next question that I have is if you could point to something that you could improve uh, within your own work, what would it be and why? I would say learning the rules of D and D is probably the number one thing I could I could stand to do, mm. if not only to with the objective of being able to mix in a bunch of jokes about how they aren't following the rules. And then when they do follow the rules, it's kind of a nice touch. Um, I do have sort of a narrative idea on how to convert the characters from having mana to spell slots, but that uh, I won't spoil how that happens, mm -hmm. but that is part of the narrative I've been considering just to 
make it more in line with D&D, but also to make it narratively make sense and consistent with what has been previously there. Okay, that's pretty um, good. That's pretty good. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and uh, another part that I'd really that I've been challenging myself to do is coming up with more creative insults rather so like rather than just having them swear at each other which you know it is very funny just to hear them swear but at the end of the day it can get a little old when they're saying when like I've had to revise the third episode a couple of times especially the first scene because there's so much use of the c word in my first draft and then I'm just like okay it's it's not that it's offensive it's that I use it too much Mm. so I had to cut back um, and, you know, just coming up with different creative insults that don't involve rated R language has been very funny, very cathartic, because um, there are a lot you can, there's a lot you can do if you challenge yourself not to be, like, sort of rated R. I mean, obviously, that's still going to be part of my show, you know, I'm not going to stop the characters from swearing, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're also going to, you know, have a bit more variety in, you know, how they insult each other uh, going forward, which is something that I really look forward to challenging myself over nice a bit of a a bit of character development there oh yeah (laughs) and i mean like you know it also depends on when they swear and who's who's swearing and why they're doing it you know Mm. so i mean like as as long as it's not superfluous then i think it's you know ao good and then i I think people notice the super the superfluity of it Mm. rather than the actual offensive nature of it if that makes sense yeah i think so I think so. I, I I will say obviously the the use of the language uh, was it definitely has a, had a bit of a shock value to it. And I think it's because I think you probably use the most. Uh, I guess you, I guess you could call it offensive sort of language in the term of like you know yeah. swearing. Um, it's not something that I've I've come across like any others or like in my own. So it was very much like. It took me a moment to sort of like the first time like one of them like used the c word i was just all like, <gasps> like what am i gasping for <laughs> it's okay it's a woman calling another woman the c word so it's okay <laughs> and, uh, you know I-, I will never have a man call a woman the c word because that just implies a whole bunch of other misogyny and you know sexism and all that stuff so it's it's a very different relationship when in my opinion when a man calls the woman the c-word versus when a woman calls a woman the c-word it's like so it's very different connotative wise hmm. so what was the sense. uh thought process then behind with the with the the heavy use of strong language at first it was just shock value and because i thought it would be funny to hear them say that kind of stuff hmm. yeah. um that's really where it originated from um, and then I realized, oh, wait, maybe I could use this sort of as a character tool. So, um, obviously, I think Lauren swears the most out of everybody, like Lauren and Marjorie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it sort of, in my opinion, goes along with their bombastic personalities, um, sort of the unhinged nature of them. Very rarely does Marianne swear, and I don't think Askeladd swears. Askeladd swears once, but that's when he gets shot in the, shot in the leg by a guard. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's like sort of a narrative tool that I try to use, and then sort of, oh, if this character swears more than the others, then that's a defining trait of them. So, hmm. oh, so who would you say is your favorite character within your series? My favorite character in the series right now, probably Lauren Bobert, just because she's probably easy, easily the funniest and the most fun to write. Um. I'd say my, you know, in terms of the actual character, you know, not in just terms of how fun they are to write, um, I'd probably say the character I wrote for Elizabeth Warren, I mean, not not to go into any spoilers, but she has a very, like, I've sort of wrote her as sort of, like, the nerdy, like, very shy, but at the same time, like, you know, sort of book nerdish type sense, if that if that makes any sense at all. Mm. Sort of, um, not very meek, but just, like, sort of the nerdy one of the group that is also sort of the least secure in herself that is sort of the most um, shy out of all of them or the most, um, like, 
Uh, de definitely probably the most susceptible to feeling insecure and feeling influenced by the people around her, I guess, mm -hmm. would be a decent way to describe that. So the character arc I kind of have going for her is what makes probably her version of Elias a hex death the probably the one of the most compelling characters that I've written for the show. And then you'll see a lot more of why that is in episodes three and four, because I'm I'm leaning towards just releasing both of them maybe about a week apart just to show like, hey, this is actually still in production and there's two episodes instead of one you get to look forward to. Oh, that's pretty good. I quite like that. That does actually then bring me to my next question, is it so when could we expect to see episode three? Mid December. Uh, mid to late December. My due date is well before is before the new year. Um, and then four should arrive shortly after. Oh, you heard it here first, folks. President Ashen Hart, episode three, coming mid to late December. Mm -hmm. Would you be in, Would you be looking at making it as a premiere, or would it just be a, an upload? Oh, it'll it'll absolutely be a premiere. You know, I want to generate as much hype as I possibly can over these because I've been working on it for a long time. I, I want to have as big an audience as I possibly can. <laughs> well, then, uh, yeah. Once you once you've uploaded uh, the announcement for it, then I'll I'll share it for you as well. Get that get I, it going. I, I would be honored. Thank you so much. Yeah. That 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 means a lot to me. Thank you. No, no, at all. No, no problem, mate. I, I'm quite happy to you know help help get the word out i had someone when i first like did the announcement that i'd be interviewing i'd there's someone who came up there uh poitus watcher i think they're called i might have got the name wrong but um he or or she they i'm not sure who it is but they've been watching i think like every single content creator who does who does this kind of stuff and they like comment on every single one and they hadn't heard of your channel before so I was just like, ah, oh, excellent. I've managed to point them in the right direction. So I imagine there's going to, obviously, there's going to be some other people that are all fans because you start seeing, like, some of the same names start popping up in the comment section, and you, you can tell which ones are, like, the big fans of, like, multiple people because they're just popping up everywhere. So Oh, yeah. So it would be quite help. It would be quite good then to sort of, like, start pointing them. It's like, ah, oh, well, here's someone else who's also creating that content. Go and go and check them out. So no, I'm ab yeah, yeah, absolutely I, happy to, to help you out there, bud. Absolutely. Um, I, I also saw that you um linked uh, the Dark Souls, uh, President's Play Dark Souls video on the Discord a little bit ago. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was really nice. Yeah, again, like anyone who is, um, anyone who's creating this sort of stuff, like I want to help get their, get that audience to as, as, as much as I can, can do, you know, and uh, hopefully that will, you know, boost them up a little bit and get them to like you know keep working on it because I, I i've i've had a lot of like friends in the past who've you know they wanted to get into youtube some of them didn't have really the right motivation for it um but and then some of them they they'd be making their videos and then they get they get so disheartened because they only got like five views and it was like no well don't stop you know keep going because it is you know if you, you're looking to be successful you you can't just expect to upload like three or four videos and think, "Oh, I'm going to be the next PewDiePie." Like you got to keep going. Yeah, I mean that know? that that stuff happens so rarely, and usually it's just coupled with a bunch of other hype going on. Yeah, exactly. You, you got but again, this is why you got to have you got to have you got to you got to not think of you got to not think of like trying to get the numbers in. You got to be you, you're yeah, doing you it because you want to make those sort of videos. Exactly, you know, and that's basically my number one piece of advice to anyone trying to, or anyone who's been thinking about um, starting an AI D&D channel, or any, any AI politicians play channel, is just, like, make it because you want to make it. Like, don't think about the viewers, don't think about the subscribers, just make what you want to see, and then if other people want to see it, then they will follow. Yeah. Um, but it has to come from a place of passion, and it just, like... Yeah, it, it just has to because if you're just doing it for the views, like it, it's going to it's going to show, like you said. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's been quite nice in the last um you know several weeks. There's been a few like new channels have come up. So just mentioned there's someone who's doing one for um uh oh my god, I just drew a blank. Uh, there's one Is doing it Dark Souls. Dark Souls, thank you. Uh, there's one doing it for Dark Souls. Another one 
uh, has been doing it now for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, Which one was that? I, I was trying to think of that. Uh, it's Disgruntled Sir. Okay, I'll have to check called. them out later. Um, I think that was it. Or oh, it's Disgruntled President. It might have been Disgruntled Presidents. Sorry, Disgruntled Presidents. Um, yeah, so they. I think they've already got three episodes up. Uh, there was another one who just he only he's only uploaded one video so i'm not sure if they're still gonna carry on but they first they did a video on it was actually it was a, it was a, it was a i don't even know what what type of video this was but basically they were just talking about like presidents play ai as like a genre and they were just like was this the in was this the analysis video that's the one yeah that's analysis thank you i'll just try my style to draw a blank um, yeah, I saw that one. That was very, that was very good. I, I did like that one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I, I, if I remember correctly, and it's been weeks since I've last seen it. Um, his main takeaway from it was that you should add more variety of voices. Um, that people who aren't just the presidents, mm. is from what I remember, and then so I was like, okay, that's that's actually a pretty good point to make. Um. Yeah. But I mean, it's. I think it's definitely more than just the voices because, you know, people go for the voices, but they stay for the story. Yes, hundred percent. And th this is something that I've I've mentioned in a couple of previous, um, podcast episodes where I, I had a I had a friend when I originally first told him about, oh, this is something I want to put together. At the time, there there were four, I think maybe five other YouTubers that had made a single episode. This was before like. AI guy, Malafrex, even Clone had like made any episodes, mm. um, and I was like, "Oh, I, I want to do something about D and D, and I'll do the president's thing." And he's like, "Oh yeah, but it's just a meme, you know. It's not going to be that good." I was like, it, "Well, it will, it will, you know, the initial interest will be because it's the meme." But I said, "It will develop." My my theory was that it would develop a core audience of people that in, not only enjoy like the meme of it, but they actually quite enjoy the D and D aspect of it more and that's the thing that will keep you know they'll, they'll keep the interest for the in for the entertainment and i'll just oh yeah so, you know several months on it's just sort of like ah yes i was right <laughs> 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 people were enjoying the meme but they're more enjoying the D and D. yeah people would i i mean i think still are enjoying the meme but the meme i think itself is probably past its prime because oh yeah uh, mm. Yeah, I mean the D and D meme space except like itself, I think is past its prime. But the AI presidents playing stuff, I think is still probably relevant. Um, I've seen a bunch of videos of them playing Call of Duty Nazi Zombies, hmm. um, and then they're just again talking like they would in middle school, um, which I I I I I think the charm of that is always going to remain just seeing these 70 year old men and 70 year old women playing stuff than doing things that, you know, that people in their low, you know, high, low thirties, high twenties are doing. Mm. Well, um, well, I mean, yeah, especially being such public figures too, and having such recognizable voices. Yeah. True. I mean, and uh, I, I agree with you definitely that the, the meme, of just the presidents play or the politicians are playing games and stuff. I think that can probably will still keep going for a while, and there might not be a huge like in comparison like interest into the D and D bit. But I think the D and D bit is still going to have like a relevantly like core community around it because I, mm -hmm. I I just think because like you said you know it's the story, you know it's the comedy, it's the sounds, it's the the visuals. You know, all of that is is what is what ke is what is keeping people entertained. You know, so oh yeah, and seeing their favorite public figures in a medieval setting, I think, is also a very cool thing. Yeah. Um. You know, because it's basically like Obama the Ranger, you know, Paladin the Pal Chump the Paladin, and Joey the Cleric. You know, it's like they're in this fantasy world, and it's just very nice to see them. You know, interact with this story. And just them in a setting where they are kind of forced to work together yeah. against Kalos, the evil clown. <laughs> I, I remember the uh, 
there was one episode he had done where like the tension had been dialed right up oh yeah yeah just though that was one of my favorite episodes of his because it wasn't exactly comedy but it was just well written yeah um yeah that yeah and that was the first the, the one fact that, that really had... got me yeah that was like you know i think clone really proved that you could do a good story with these kind of voices you know so long as you know you kind of write a good story and you know use the right 11 labs clips i swear using the right 11 labs clips is can make or break a scene for me because and i i talk from experience i'll probably have a line that you know i'll put it in generate it and then it sounds good but i just want a better one mm -hmm. and then like five or six generations in i'm like okay my first one was the best one so i'm just gonna use the first one yeah i i've lost i've lost track of how many times i've, I've regenerated lines and just sometimes they just it didn't matter what i did i could not get the right emphasis out and it's probably it's yeah it's probably one of my biggest regrets for for my own videos is that I've like I've heard back through some of them and I just think yeah the the voice just it just wasn't what I really needed it to be at that time you know yeah and so I mean that's the beauty of it cuz you know within the editing process even if I'm staring at the final cut of it and then I see a line that I don't like I can just go into 11 labs and replace it as best I can mm. and so just clicking and plucking all that fun stuff um yeah, yeah. but yeah it's it's just such a process um and for the sh i found out for the shorter lines like for the lines that are just you know two or three words i've had to do some of the most generations for those because the emphasis and emotion that they carry with those short lines can vary quite a lot especially compared to some of the longer ones mm. so usually with some of the longer lines like the monologues i'm usually able to get those in like one maybe two takes mm -hmm. and i sort of i i even sometimes like to imagine i'm playing director and i'm directing an actor to do <laughs> this line this way okay let's take it from the top do this line again please <laughs> and just trying to direct a program to act the way i want until finally i get that right take yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way of looking into that. Uh, my uh, next question is, uh, so President D&D &D or politicians play D&D &D is, is obviously is a, a very niche genre. Where mm -hmm. would you like to see it go or like turn into like in, in the future? My ideal scenario for President's Play D&D is that it becomes as staple to the D&D um, genre as Critical Role. Mm -hmm. You know, just as popular as that, just within the same vein as that, just within the same fan base. Because I feel like what viewers of Critical Role can really get into the AI Dungeons & Dragons. I feel like that's sort of the untapped market or audience that um ai presidents D, D could really tap into yeah um especially even if like you know fingers crossed we can get matt moser's voice or matt moser to um make an ai D, &D. <laughs> it just came up with an idea um ai D, D, but with the critical role people and their voices I uh, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be that, that's just something i came up with on the spot i'm probably not going to do that but we'll see <laughs> Well, um, uh, sorry, wait a moment. My Discord just started playing up there. Uh, oh, no. uh, it's okay. It came back. Uh, Woo. Um, so do you obviously you, you so you mentioned a little while back that you you could see how this is how your campaign is going to play out. You've got an idea of sort of how many episodes roughly, and you can sort of see like the ending when this one has uh, wrapped up do you see yourself doing any other projects i have been thinking about doing a one shot with the presidents and ben shapiro um just so i can have one of those um but it would definitely be a one-off um hmm. after this campaign's done i was thinking about a season two of the woman politicians you know because at the end of the campaign they're gonna beat the bad guy and they're gonna save the day but then what happens next yeah 
and so I, I've been thinking about different anime characters to make the next villain and how I want to develop the world more. Um, I, I can blame One Piece for this uh, world-building fiasco a lot because I I just finished the the Ennis Lobby arc, which is such a good arc. Mm. Um, but just having the characters, you know, team up but then separate out to fight the other bad guys and then eventually they accomplish their goal they save the day they rescue their friends but then what happens next you know obviously everything's not well um even after they rescue nico robin mm. um and you know they still have the overarching threat of the world government and so building up the lore throughout my first campaign will eventually tie into the next campaign because there's still the overarching you know, there's still the kingdom of Alteria and the monarch in that, you know, the army doesn't give a shit about its citizens. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool. Just it's like it's, that whole thing. It's, it's good. It's it's nice to know that even after the first campaign's done, there's that possible idea of like the continuation for it to, to keep going. I like it. It's, it's fantastic. It means that there's there's more to look forward to in the future. Absolutely. Um, I, I, all I really need to do is get onto a better work schedule in my private time and make sure that I, I mean, um, it, I do kind of blame the marijuana addiction that I have mm. on me not being able to do as much as I wanted to on this stuff, mm -hmm. which, you know, is something that I'm trying to work through, but you know, it, it is so hard, especially when, you know, I work all day and all i want to do is just you know relax but you know at the end of the day i just feel worse about myself when oh. i do that so it's like I i'm sorry if that got too personal don't worry about it look it's absolutely fine listen i i used to i used to smoke it all the time like i was mm -hmm. I, I was on it every day for probably 10 plus years um oh i've goodness. i've now been clean for over a year and a half um, congratulations that's that's a big accomplishment thank you um, uh, I do understand uh, the difficulties of it. The honestly, the first step, which you've already, it seems like you've already, you're already aware, is that you know that you're addicted to it. So it that's that's a huge step to start with, and it's just yeah, a, it's, I mean, to, um, it's to work from that. One one thing I found was quite useful was <clears throat> excuse me was to have an outlet, have something else that you could uh, focus on uh, that that distracted you from that took you away from that sort of urge to you know have a puff you know what i mean mm -hmm. and yeah like um i'll be honest like um before this interview i was super nervous and all i wanted to do was that which um thank goodness i did not like <laughs> I, that would have been terrible had i done that so um it's you know just being able to stay sober for this interview has been kind of an accomplishment for me yeah well well done mate i i don't i don't i hope like they're doing sound patronizing um, I do. No, uh, you're fine. Cause, you're cause, fine. Cause I, 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 honestly, I do know what it's like. The, the number of times in the past where I've been oh, so nervous in something, and I think, ah, oh, well, I'll go and have a have a quick smoke. That'll make me feel better and stuff. And, and it's it like doesn't. You, yeah, exactly. It just it's all it's doing is sort of blocking out what what your real what your real concern is. What you realize it's not addressing the problem. It's just trying to to hide it. You know. Yeah. But uh, we're getting we're getting a little bit deep in that. But I tell you now, um, <laughs> outside of this podcast, if if you ever want to like talk seriously about you know giving it up or you want to get it off your chest and actually talk about this sort of stuff, you can always drop me a message. But and if I'm you know if I'm available, give us a call. I can I'll talk you through all my old experiences with it and all the rest of it. Thank you. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Um, you know, obviously, I'm probably not going to give it up cold turkey mm -hmm. quite yet. Um, probably after this podcast, I'm just going to be like, oh, thank goodness, a celebratory hit. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, um, as long as it doesn't get in the way of what I want to do, you know, it, 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 it is. I, I do think it is a lot like alcohol, where it's like, you know, if you do one and you do it way too much, it does interfere. But like, you know, just once in a while, it's, mm. you know, fine, you know, good. All right. And I'm probably going to get like a bunch of comments saying, oh, weed's not addictive. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they can, uh, they'll just stick to uh, comments about 
uh, the main the main topic, which is obviously uh, the AI. DVD. Yeah, so, sorry I went off on that tangent. Don't be sorry, right mate. There. It's absolutely. Hey, don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. It's all cool, man. Um, all right. So uh, now we're going to go over to our questions from the fans. And awesome. We have one here from uh, James Meow, uh, a bit of a contributor to the channel. Uh, he's asked uh, many questions over the over the time and regular uh, gets regularly involved. Uh, would you consider using more popular AI voices in your videos to get more views? Uh, yes. Yes, I have uh, considered using more popular AI voices um, like Trump, uh, Obama, Biden. Mm -hmm. um, f definitely for the one shot that I'm planning, but also um, sort of light spoilers of what's to come. I do have plans to have the presidents and Ben Shapiro appear as cameo characters just sort of in the world outside of the D&D. &D. And then Ben yeah. Shapiro's like, oh, hey, what are you girls doing? And then they just... And then I'll make jokes about, like, him doing his own campaign. But um, that, that's that's uh, very light spoilers for Episode 5. Uh, oh, Episode 5. All right. Okay, that is quite ahead. Nice. Well, I mean, like, you know, because I'm combining 3 into 3 and 4, so it yeah. would be, like, the very next big project. Gotcha. Oh, fair enough. Uh, the next one we have, uh, he's posted several questions. This is uh, Giacomo Sorbi, and I really hope I pronounced it right this time. Uh, this is another this is another regular contributor, um, and he's definitely one that I've seen on multiple channels, so he does follow uh, quite a lot. He's, he's very good. Um, uh, he gives very honest uh, feedback from what I've seen uh, on, on channels. Um, he's very much in... He's definitely very knowledgeable on D and D, um, and he was very kind to supply us with several questions. So uh, his first one was: uh, How did they decide to go for female-only politicians? Really, because uh, the first inclination was that nobody else was doing them, so I wanted to be the first to do it. Hmm. Um, that that was the big one. Um, the second one was that. I had already had sort of a knowledge base on who these people are. Um, the the whole yeah, my opinions on Kamala Harris basically are formed from her Charlemagne interview when she was just talking so condescendingly towards him, even though he was like you know objectively in the right and asking his line of questions. So, you know, basically basing the characters' personalities around their speeches and around their interviews definitely, I felt, um, helped enhance the characters. Um, you know, and the reason why I chose specifically women politicians, um, again, was because I, nobody else had done them, but also because it sort of gives a um, sort of just a theme to it. Um, in fact, actually, before I came up with the name women politicians, I was either going to go with... Um, it's a, so I, I was actually asking my girlfriend at the time, and I asked her, "Okay, do you like girl politicians play D and D or lady politicians play D and D?" And then she said, "Make it woman politicians play D and D." And so I'm like, "Okay, that's that's a much better title than either of the two that I had." So um, that that's sort of where the original title of it came from. Okay. Um. You know, and also because, you know, every other one is all men or all men and one woman mm -hmm. with uh, AI guys. So it's like, okay, well, um, to quote a Supreme Court justice, um, would they only be equal as long as there are all women on the Supreme Court or something like that? <laughs> and so I was like, okay, M maybe we need just as many channels with female politicians as there are ones with male politicians, and then everything will be hi a hippie dandy. Okay. Um, well, his next question is, um, why uh, do you not use more famous female politicians like AOC or HRC? Well, Hillary um, basically is still wandering the woods and whatever, like after her 2016 loss. Um, I, I don't, <laughs> so um, the reason I chose these politicians was that they're relevant for now and HRC really hasn't been relevant since 2016. Like she's just kind of a, a ghost in the ether. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like like just around. Um, as for AOC, um, you know, I, I have considered using her and she may or may not appear as the sixth and final addition to this campaign. Um, 
may or may not do that. Hint, hint. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, so the reason I use, like, politicians from the U.S. is because that is my bias. I am from the U.S., you know, born and raised in Massachusetts. So, you know, Elizabeth Warren is my senator, so I kind of had to give her a spot in there, mm -hmm. as well as her just being kind of, like, a kooky sounding person in general yeah. like you know she in, in real life she is like one of the most brilliant people ever but like you know just she sounds like a squeaky faucet when she talks <laughs> fair enough i mean to her credit she did like you know real life her did do the cfpb which helped ordinary people out a ton mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, their politics you know are very much in line with what i like um, you know, not as, you know, I would go farther, you know, like Marion Williamson is like the farthest left out of all of them. She's running for president, but she's also never held political office. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, she, she's the sole exception because the only Paul, because there were some comments that asked me to do Carrie Lake and Ann Coulter and some other people. And the limitation I wanted to put on myself was. I am only going to do politicians, uh, the players are only going to be politicians who have been elected and are currently serving at the time of production. Yeah. Okay. So the reason I'm not doing Carrie Lake is because she lost her election and no Ann Coulter because she's not a politician, never, like, you know, served in office or isn't serving in office, mm -hmm. um, which is why, you know, the only reason Sarah Sanders is in there in episode two is because she's now the governor of Arkansas, where she got her initial fame from being Trump's uh, press secretary. Right. You know, like the 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 icon the most iconic one with like the the scowl look on her eye. I don't know if you know that. Uh, like no, the famous no. Sarah Sanders scowl. <laughs> uh, I'll probably it probably one of those things that it's it's. Like you're saying with like sound effects, it's not quite registered. But now that you've said it, I'll probably spot it now more often. But, um, yeah, just watch her talk. It's like very funny. <laughs> well, um, his next two questions, I, I think he may have already sort of partially answered these. It was one is will we I can also answer them again? All right. Well, we we'll also will we also see non-U.S. politicians, and we will also see male politicians. Um, yes, but not as player roles in the current woman politicians, um, campaign. Um, I do have a plan for Carrie Lake to make a guest appearance, hmm. um, sort of, but not as a player, but as an NPC. Right. Okay. And I've already established in the universe that they do have the ability to, you know, because Marion has this, like, voice program that can do any anime or real life character. Excuse me any anime or real life character they want oh, nice. and so i'm going to play around with that idea a lot more awesome and his final question will Askelad come back yes it's just spoilers straight up yes he's coming <laughs> back it, he didn't he didn't die on screen so he didn't die like uh the cave collapsed as soon as he left the scene he's coming back I'm not going to say in what capacity, but uh, yes, Askeladd will return. It's just a head. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, um, you know he'll wish he was just a head. Um, once you re once I reveal in what state he's in, but um, he'll wish he was dead. <laughs> the yeah. ball, the ball buster is going to live up to her name. <laughs> sure. I am very much looking forward to writing episode five. All right, all right, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing it and with the other episodes that will be coming out. And uh, that is going to wrap it up for tonight's episode of Roll for Discussion. Thank you, viewers, for taking the time to ask your questions and listen in on this. And thank you very much, President Ashenhart, for taking part. Yes, um, thank you very much for having me on. Um, my name is President Ashenhart. Um, you can follow me on my YouTube channel. Um, I uh, would it be okay if I plugged my dono page? Go right ahead. All right. So um, you could also, if you want to be amazing, uh, I have now granted you a superpower, and your new superpower is that you have the ability to donate to my channel. 
Uh, you can go onto my coffee, ko however it's pronounced, Kofi link that I put in my uh, YouTube bio. And a donate, even a dollar helps. You know, if I if I see anyone donate, I will that will make my day. Honestly, like anytime somebody even comments a thing on my video, even if it's negative, that may literally just get me through the work day because I'll be like, oh yeah, somebody's actually acknowledging me. You know, even though they hate my work, they at least you know cared enough about it to comment. So, yeah. oh, fantastic. Well, again, thank you very much for taking part. And if any other President Play D&D content creators out there would like to take part, I invite you all to come on and have a discussion. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, please drop us a like, hit the uh, subscribe button, share it with your friends, or leave a comment down below. And please go and check out President Ashenhart if you haven't yet. Drop them a like, comment, smash the subscribe button, and share it with your friends. Until next time, maybes. So you're Kyan Rath. This just got a whole lot worse. We have to stop him. If you fail this, it will mean the end for you. It's the only way to make things right. Don't do it, Swole. Stop! Are you sure you want to do this? about to Kyle Rittenhouse these bitches.